Wow, would you look at that? It's working fantastically well. It's still making bubbles. And what you're looking at is inside the heating element of a coffee making machine. Sorry, I don't drink coffee. I don't have a better name for this machine. But the problem with it was, as the owner tells me, that when water runs through it, it's not making the water hot enough to make the beverage. So, in this video I'll walk you through what's involved here. Let's start with the name. It says Cafe Roma, although that doesn't mean a whole lot. And then there's another word here appearing on it. That. And of course it's got a nameplate, but the nameplate is on the underside. So let's see if I can flip just the underside for a show and tell. There, that will kind of work for make and model there. So that's what we have here and I've removed a handful of screws out of it and experimenting, those are the screws, and experimenting with all of these bits how we can clean this heater element. The heater element is bolted together out of two casting halves, here is one of them. The same product is CLR, calcium lime rust remover is what's on it. It's some kind of mild acid, something, I don't know, hydrochloric acid, maybe, I don't know, whatever commercial concentration. So if you don't have it, don't go for the battery acid. But eventually will work much the same way. However, battery acid is likely to remove the Teflon coating or whatever coating is on the dye, on the, on the casting. And, uh, okay, it's not bubbling anymore, there's a strong smell of vinegar and those gases that develop might be flammable. So, uh, keep that one in mind. And of course you don't want to, there is the rubber seal that goes between those two rubber, those two uh, metal casting halves. There is an edge on this one here, and there you can see this edge that's compressing this seal, making the unit watertight. So how does this work? Water is put in here, into this container. At the bottom of it, there's a one-way valve. And the water runs through, or empties out. In there, at the bottom of it, you kind of get there. You get the idea. And then runs through a hose, because it runs through a pump, and the pump lifts the water through the rest of the hose there, and pumps it here so it comes up somewhere here there's a hole right here water goes around in a circle enclosed between those two uh, metal castings and is being heated up the heater element is cast into the metal in here so as the water goes around depending on the rate of output of the pump for the water whatever amount of time the water tends to spend in here while circling around that's the time it has for being heated up and then it drains out at the bottom and thereabouts and then it drips into a cup so why it did not make the beverage hot enough of course is because of all of these calcium deposits or mineral deposits that are in the water they are still being dissolved by this CLR so uh, it's a fairly easy straightforward fix and all I needed was two kinds of screwdriver here is one of them with a long reach because one bolt is uh, located kinda there you know at the bottom of this kinda piece and I'll briefly explain where those bolts and screws came from and I needed a four millimeter hex key or allen key for this bolt that's basically you get the idea four mil so that's basically all I needed so the this heater element is held together by four screws at the four corners you have to hold it from the underside because that's where the nut is the nut goes into a recess and so the nut has to be held in the recess when you spin the top of the bolt when you put them together or when you take them apart these snap action disc thermostats these two of them just sit on the top of the upper uh, casting and this wire is just clamped in the middle I'll show you in a sec 
this is just held in place by one screw that lives right here you can kind of see there and then the top of it is held in place by the lid which is here this lid has four screws two of them go here this is where these long plastic extensions or tubes or whatever these are there go in and so you have to remove the screws from the underside and there's one screw there and some some screws at the back of the machine there are those metal tabs you get the idea the button just comes off but when you put it back on just there is this spine on it in the middle of this rib here uh, let's see where do I get a nice picture yeah, we'll call it close enough you get the idea there's this rib so that this this rib here needs to line up just look inside there and you'll get the idea so that's how the top goes on the bottom goes on in four screws likewise one two and three four the uh, this dip tray also stays in place somewhat with an additional four screws to there and do that so that's what's involved fairly straightforward and uh, yeah just needs these two screws drivers Phillips number two that would be Phillips number two there a long reach yeah this was too short this was slightly longer yeah not really longer but it yeah this was stuck here it was too thick it wasn't going through that that uh, black tube so the other one worked, this one worked, this is too chunky so that's what's involved, fairly straightforward and you can do this yourself if you really really don't want to buy yourself a completely new machine for no reason, just a handful of screws and okay it takes a little bit of time for this CLR to work through but whatever you can get it done in I don't know, half a day and then you have uh, hot water running through it exactly as it was designed in almost perfect good condition a couple of screws are rusty or whatever has some deposits on the heads on them but other than that, other than that it's fairly straightforward alright I'm gonna put them